Hello you guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I would say is an exciting one, but honestly, I feel like this isn't very exciting. It's just more so extremely important if you are in that build up phase of becoming an influencer, starting your brand, trying to grow on YouTube, and right now you're focusing a lot of your time on your content. There's so much other work that needs to be going on behind the scenes, and I wanna share some of what I did when I was growing my brand, and especially how I set myself up for success so that when I did get picked up from YouTube, my brand in general just absolutely skyrocketed because I had these things in place. But before we get into it, today's video is sponsored by GoDaddy and I if you guys have been following me for a while, then you know that I love GoDaddy. I have been using them for a very long time. So I purchased all of my domains through them. So I've got the content bug, Catherine Manning, shop Catherine Manning, all of my domains I purchased through GoDaddy as well as my hosting is done through them as well. But they really strive to empower entrepreneurs by providing the help and tools that you guys need to succeed online. So not only do they have the things that I talked about, but they also have a YouTube channel, which is extremely informative and has so many incredibly helpful videos that you guys might find useful. And I really recommend that you check that out. But also in this video, we're going to talk about the GoDaddy Studio, which was previously known as Over, but there's so many things that you guys can do with that when it comes to growing your YouTube channel and setting your brand up for success. So there's a lot that I wanna cover and let's just go ahead and get into it. A few weeks ago, I uploaded a video on my channel answering your guys' questions about this build-up phase. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about here, basically what I call the build-up phase is if you are a beginner, you're just now getting started, maybe you just bought your website and you wanna become a blogger, maybe you just started a YouTube channel and you've only created a few videos, or even if you've been doing this for like a year and you're still trying to grow and you're still trying to lay the foundation, that's what we're gonna call the build-up phase here. So in that video specifically, I answered your guys' questions about turning your dreams into plans. We talked a little bit about setting real realistic goals for yourself. And one of the things that really sparked the idea for this video is I think the question was like, I've done a lot of research, but I still have no idea where to get started. And I gave an example of if you're getting started with a website and if you're getting started with a YouTube channel, just some upper level basics to get you started. It was really surface level stuff. And I think, yes, okay, this video is going to be for anyone that ha already has a YouTube channel, or maybe you already have a website and you have the bare basics, but you don't really know what to do next. I wanna share with you what I did next and what I really focused on during the buildup phase. So the very first thing is diversifying and laying your foundation across different channels. So if you wanna become a YouTuber, I'm gonna guess that you have a YouTube channel or if you don't have a YouTube channel, just freaking go to YouTube, create a Gmail account, get a YouTube channel. Like it's not hard to set one up, but if you already have your YouTube channel, what other platforms do you have? Now, you do not need to be on all platforms. Like for example, I don't even have the TikTok app. I know TikTok has taken off. It's been taken off for a very long time. It would probably be smart for me to get on TikTok, but I am tapped out with the amount of content that I can create. So you need to ask yourself, where is your audience located? Okay, let's like back it up a little bit here. If you have not figured out your target audience, that's what you need to be doing right now. So who is in your target audience and what do they need and want from you? And what platforms do you have the capacity to take on in terms of creating content? So you got YouTube, you got Facebook, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, a website, like there's so many different platforms that you can have. And if you're going to have anything, I'm specifically talking to YouTubers here, okay? I think you need to have an Instagram account. Honestly, I don't think Instagram's going anywhere. It's been around for a very long time and it is great to use Instagram to connect with your audience as well as promote your YouTube videos. So I think Instagram is very important. Pinterest, if you guys watched my, one of my recent videos I shared, <laughs> oh my gosh, my strategy when I had zero subscribers compared to 400,000 subscribers, subscribers and I showed you guys where my views were coming from in the beginning and actually traffic sources outside of YouTube, my top source of traffic was Pinterest. Pinterest is a good platform that you can use in the beginning to promote your YouTube channel. So definitely have a Pinterest account, I recommend it. And then a website. I for sure recommend a website if you are a YouTuber. This is your way to connect with your audience if everything goes down. If Instagram shut down, if YouTube shut down, you own your website. And guys, getting a website is not that hard. The develop Developing and designing a website is definitely harder for you to do, but purchasing a domain, you can just go to GoDaddy, type in whatever you want the domain to be. If that domain is not available, they're gonna recommend other options to you. And you can just purchase your domain, you can use the hosting through GoDaddy and either hire a website designer or do it yourself. But having a very basic, simple website, it can only be like five pages. It doesn't have to be anything too complicated, but having a backup plan just in case everything goes down, I do think is important. And if you want to promote your paid products in the 
future if you come up with paid products let's say you want to offer services or do events or you're coming out with merch having a website is a good thing to fall back on and again I would just recommend buying that in the very beginning now the next thing you need to do is make sure that you are linking all of your platforms together so on YouTube specifically you can link to different websites you can link to your Instagram your Pinterest on your channel as well as within the description bar of your videos make sure that you have links to the channels that you want to link to for example I have got my vlog channel always linked within my main channel description bar as well as my Instagram and then I also have links to my paid products but we're not really talking about those here if someone stumbles upon your YouTube channel they really like your YouTube channel and this is silly but people are lazy they have to go to Instagram and then search Catherine Manning it's an extra step for them compared to if they can just click on a link and then follow me on Instagram it's a lot easier but you not only want to do that with YouTube leading to all of your other platforms you want to also do it with all of your other platforms leading back to YouTube or back to your other platforms and recently reels have been popping off on Instagram I mean if you guys did not know that already I don't know where you've been I actually have three reels that have over a million views on Instagram and I'm gaining an audience over there that is finding me through Instagram but not through YouTube and it's really fast but I make sure that within the bio of my Instagram account I've got links so I actually have several links there leading to different things but also when I talk on my Instagram stories I include swipe ups now you have to have over 10,000 followers to include swipe ups but I include swipe ups to my YouTube channel to my videos that I'm launching because I want to cross over all of the platforms and make them work really really well together besides that I know I briefly mentioned like what if Instagram goes down or what if YouTube goes down how are you gonna communicate with your audience and having a website is a great thing to have but on that website I do think you should have opt-ins to an email list and you should have an email list and I know there are a lot of people that talk about blogging entrepreneurship YouTube like any course creator honestly will tell you that you need to have an email list because email lists are great to promote whatever you want to sell they are extreme money makers I'm not going to lie there me personally I hate emails I absolutely hate them I get too many emails a day and it's extremely overwhelming and I do not want to be another person hopping in your inbox just annoying you but I do believe in having an email list and if you are just now getting started okay create an email list I don't care if you're not nurturing it I don't care if you're not using it right now in this moment just start collecting emails and in the future if you come out with paid products for one the main reason or I wouldn't say the main reason why I have an email list I use my email list primarily at this point in time to deliver and automate all of my paid products products and again if you're in the beginning stages you may not have paid products you may not have events or services that you want to remote but if you ever think about doing that in the future having an email list is really really important to have email lists are great because you can automate it you can set it up and you can leave it and having my email automation already in place before my YouTube channel blew up was crucial to the growth of my channel because you can do so many custom things within an email list like if someone doesn't actually click on something within an email you can set up an automation to be like if they didn't specifically do this one action then send them another email or if they did this one specific action send them another email and it's kind of crazy but it's really really cool to set it up and to leave it and not worry about it and especially when you're in this beginning phase with your brand if you can do as many of those set it up and leave it things as possible do it and I think your email list is one of those things with all of that set up honestly that's like your core foundation here and we're gonna continue to build on top of it build on top of it build on top of it one of the things that you really need to take into consideration is your branding and if you are a youtuber this might not be something that you thought about but I know specifically Specifically when I got started I mean when I created my website I was afraid to show my face so like my logo was extremely important but if you're getting started with a YouTube channel and like your profile picture is your face your banner image is like maybe just your name or the name of your YouTube channel and you might not have thought about your brand colors you may not have thought about like the vibe behind your brand as well as your logo but me specifically my logo was the front of everything because I didn't want to show my face when I got started and you may not be using it all the time but honestly like even if you plan on coming out with merch in the future having a logo is something cool that you can use and like it adds like a little a little touch you guys know I've been working on my merch for a very long time it is coming I swear it's coming but I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the GoDaddy studio so when it comes to branding in general with your brand colors like I mentioned when I first got started with my brand I came up with I wanted black white I used two different shades of gray I also picked out a pink color as well as blue and as you guys know like the background like just like the vibe of my life 
is really my branding, but this is important when it comes to like your thumbnails and figuring out your banner image. You wanna make sure that it is something that makes sense. Like you don't wanna have a thumbnail that is really edgy and then your banner image is very much so, like my banner image is very much so like light and I don't know the vibe of it, but it's definitely not edgy, you know? Like, and you wanna have it across all of your platforms like we talked about. You want the vibe and the flow of your brand to make sense because you already figured it out in the beginning. So with the GoDaddy Studio, guys, if you've never used it before, it's actually an app available on your phone, which is really cool. You can also use it on the computer too, but let's say like you don't have a nice computer. You can do it all on your phone and they have some templates that you can use for whatever you're looking for. So let me actually just look it up. They've got Instagram stories, video, Facebook posts, Pinterest. So if you're trying to create Pinterest photos to pin and share your YouTube videos, you can find templates available on the GoDaddy Studio. Customize them with the hundreds of fonts and graphics that they have. You can add your own photos and stuff to make it as customized as you want and then use it for whatever you need. But logo specifically, guys, GoDaddy actually has a video tutorial because like I am not a logo designing pro here. So if you're looking to create a logo, you can do it all within the GoDaddy Studio. And I'm specifically gonna click on this just so we can see all of the different designs that they have available and you can customize every one of these. Like these are actually really cool. They have some that are available for free if you're using the GoDaddy Studio for free or if you do have the pro plan, there are more templates that you can actually use that way. But otherwise guys, I mean, you can use the GoDaddy Studio. Let me see, like if I was to create an Instagram story template, this is one of the things that you can use to promote your YouTube channel and you can design it all within the GoDaddy Studio on your phone, which makes it really convenient, especially if you're trying to upload to Instagram on your phone, like as you do, or if you're doing Pinterest on your phone, or even if you just don't have a nice computer, this is a really nice smooth app with so many different like features and things to make it custom and unique to you and your branding. So definitely recommend that you check it out. I'm going to include a link in the description bar down below as well as that tutorial. If you guys need to create a logo, definitely watch that. Let's talk a little bit about growth strategies and what you can be doing besides just creating high quality content. Collaborations. I know I don't talk about this a lot and I honestly, I don't do a lot of collaborations. I do bring experts onto my YouTube channel. Like I've had Stevie, I've had Cameron, I've had my management team come on and I love doing collaborations like that. But even in the beginning before my YouTube channel took off, I did two collaborations here on my YouTube channel with other YouTubers where we created videos that worked hand in hand together and we promoted each other's YouTube channels and those went live on both of our channels on the same day or like at least close to the same day to help to kind of switch audiences. And that's a great way to grow on YouTube. It's a great way to expand your audience. And if you find someone that has a similar audience to you, so here's my advice, okay? One, you wanna make sure that someone has a similar audience to you in terms of target audience. It wouldn't make sense if if, let's say I collaborated with a car YouTube channel. I know that I use this example a lot, but if I did a collaboration with someone else that was talking about YouTube, that was talking about entrepreneurship, that was talking about personal development, mindset, and all of that stuff, that collaboration would make a lot more sense. So you wanna make sure that someone has a similar audience to you as well as similar audience size. So when I was getting started, I looked at people that had a similar audience and plus or minus 5,000. When you're in the beginning, okay, plus or minus 5,000 followers. So let's say you've got 10,000 subscribers on YouTube and you find someone that has 15,000 subscribers, that may be a good collaboration opportunity there. But besides that, with my website, I had guest bloggers come on my website and they would just do a blog post for my website. I wouldn't do anything on their website, but it was a way to connect. It was a way for me to have someone else featured and get my audience to see someone else as well as they promoted it to their audience and then that got people to my website. So that was another way I went about it as well as I did a lot of pitches and things for websites to be featured on their site. So one of the websites was She Owns It and I ended up writing a blog post and I submitted it and I had no idea if it was ever going to be featured and then one day it was just released on their website. Now, not all of them are that way. Some you have to like pitch your idea to and they'll let you know if they like your idea and if you should actually write it and then they will upload it to their site. But that's another way that you can go about it as well as guys, podcasts. 
Podcasts are huge. Podcasts have been huge for a very long time. I have been featured on a few different podcasts over time, and some of them I have reached out to myself and I have pitched myself. Other ones have reached out to me and I've been a guest on those podcasts. While you've got some time, guys, create connections, okay? Build a network. Having a network of creative people, of other influencers, of other YouTubers, for one, it's cool because someone actually understands the world that you live in. Like whenever I try to talk to my family about some of this stuff, they're like, and how do you make money? Not everyone understands this world. So having a network is really, really important. At least it is for me, but also when it comes to collaborations and expanding your audience, it is nice to have a network that you can always reach out to and you can do those collaborations and you can grow your brand that way. Okay, it's my favorite time of the video, you guys. We have to talk about money and finances. You know, this is like one of my favorite topics, but honestly, I'm so passionate about this because if I didn't set these things in place, when my brand took off, meaning like when my YouTube channel started to get more traction and I was getting a lot of subscribers, I was getting more views. If I did not have these things in place, my brand wouldn't have been able to grow the way that it was able to grow financially. So first and foremost, you need to have a business bank account. If you don't yet, just go ahead and do it. This is a mistake that I made. I got one too late. Like I should have got one sooner than I did. But at the beginning I was running everything out of my personal bank account and it made my finances really, really complicated when it came to QuickBooks and tracking and just all of that stuff. It made my finances more complicated than what it needed to be. So I definitely recommend go out there, get a business bank account. Okay. Choose whatever bank you want and just get started with that. From there also get QuickBooks or another bookkeeping system to keep track of your finances. And one of the things that I did is I specifically, I have QuickBooks. That's what I use, but I went in and I created a bunch of different accounts so I could really track where my money is going as well as where my money is coming from. So for example, with affiliate marketing, I'm a part of a couple different affiliate marketing networks, as well as I work directly one-on-one -on -one with companies and their affiliate marketing programs. So when I am paid out, that is not just tracked in my QuickBooks as, oh, this is affiliate marketing income. I have it broken down as affiliate marketing income from company one, company two, company three, company four, and I have them all broken out. And the exact same thing goes with my sponsorships. I also have a separate account for my digital product sales, as well as other services and stuff that I used to provide that I no longer have. But even at the time I had it so broken out so that everything was extremely organized and I could be really on track of my finances. When it comes to making money though, okay? I feel like this is where a lot of people focus their energy, especially if you're trying to become a full-time content creator, you should be focusing your energy on this area. But let's say you have a goal that you wanna make more money, you wanna make $10,000 a month, you wanna hit a six-figure year, heck yes, love it. You don't know exactly how to get there. So one of the things, diversifying your income streams, and if you guys have not watched my video where I share how to create a money plan, I'm gonna recommend that you watch that. I'll include it here as well as in the description bar down below, but you need to understand what your money money making opportunities are and what income streams you can create for yourself. And let's say you want to become monetized on YouTube, but you're not monetized yet, but you're selling your services. You are getting started with affiliate marketing. Maybe you want to develop your paid products and all of that. If you are just now getting started with affiliate marketing and you want to make more money there, I definitely recommend that you apply to different affiliate marketing networks. Now, some of them you might not be able to get into. If you're just now getting started, you have a small audience. They may have different guidelines that you need to hit in order to actually be accepted into that program, but definitely make sure that you are diversifying with what companies and programs and services you are an affiliate of and include the links within your videos. Now, this is one of the things that I absolutely did right before I ever blew up on YouTube within the description bar of my videos and even like backtrack a little bit, I was creating videos that were promoting affiliate marketing links while I still had a small audience. And at the time, yes, it was driving some affiliate marketing sales, but not a lot. It wasn't until my YouTube channel really blew up that my affiliate marketing sales went absolutely crazy, like making over $10,000 a month with affiliate marketing because I had already created videos that were really focused on those affiliate marketing links. I had links included in almost every single one of the videos, like within the description bar of every single one of my videos, I have some kind of affiliate marketing link, which ended up resulting in not only my YouTube channel growing in terms of subscribers, but also the money that I was making with affiliate marketing. And the exact same thing applies to whatever income stream, well, maybe not whatever income stream, but to a bunch of different income streams. So let's say you sell your services and right now you only have one service that you provide to people and 
I don't know what that service is. Let's come up with something unique. So let's say that you do consultations for wardrobes and right now you're helping people create capsule wardrobes. This is just something that came into the top of my head. Let's say that is your only service, okay? There are definitely more services that you could provide to people. Let's say that someone actually wants to hire you as a personal shopper and you can do that. Maybe like someone just wants your advice or guidelines on what you think would fit their body style best and what clothing they should buy. There are different services that you can provide. And instead of offering just one service, service, create several different services. Now, again, back to like something that I did when I was getting started, I was, yes, selling my services at the time, but I was more so focused on building out my paid products. And when I was first getting started and I didn't have a large audience, my paid products were making me okay money. Like I was making a couple hundred dollars a month, which isn't too bad because I'm selling my products at like 20 some dollars. As my YouTube channel grew, my paid products really grew because I was working behind the scenes on creating great paid products that I knew you guys would like. And I knew once my content found my target audience, I knew that they were going to like the products that I was creating. So while I was creating content and I was really focused on making this like my main source of income and increasing my affiliate marketing sales, my AdSense, all of that, I was yes, taking on clients, but also behind the scenes, I was working on my paid products and I was including links to my paid products within the description bars of my videos. And as my YouTube channel grew, my my paid product sales grew as well. So if that's something that you're interested in, if that's something that you want to try out, I mean, I really recommend experimenting right now. A tip that I got, I don't even know, it was so incredibly long ago, it was a piece of advice I think I got from a book was that 80% of your time, you should be focusing on the here and now and what you absolutely need to do to keep your business afloat and really just like kind of keep your business running as well as like short-term results. And what I mean by that is obviously every week you are going to be spending a decent bit of time creating your content across whatever platforms you decided on. And that's where 80% of your time should be spent creating content, maybe sending emails, maybe doing the services and stuff that you provide, like whatever you absolutely need need to get done. And then 20% of the time you should be working on your long-term goals and things that are going to be more so for your future. So when I was in that build up stage, I needed to have clients and I needed to sell my services because I needed to make money. And that was not my end goal, but it was something that I needed to do right then in the moment. And I was also focused on creating my content, making sure that at the time I was uploading videos every three days, I was uploading blog posts on my website. I was of course uploading photos on Instagram that was before reels or anything came out and I was focused on the here and now what I needed to do to keep my business afloat as well as make money in the meantime but behind the scenes 20% of the time I was focused on diversifying my income streams I was working on building out my brands in different ways and it is that 20% work that a lot of people do not see and whenever youtubers are like oh, I'm working on something sneaky but I can't share yet it is that work that gets them to the next level always and even right now guys I'm working on coming out with merch I am writing a book and I'm doing other are things behind the scenes that I'm very excited about that I'm not going to see immediate result from right now, but I know that I need to be putting in the work right now so that I can see long-term results from. And that's really what I'm hoping you guys get out of this video because one of the comments I get all the time is I'm doing everything right and I'm not seeing the results that I want to see and I just don't know where to spend my time, where should I focus my energy. Honestly, guys, if you are checking your analytics every single day, you're wasting your time. If you are changing your banner on your YouTube channel more than once a quarter, honestly, like more than once a year, you're wasting your time. There are other things that you should be working on behind the scenes that are going to help you to get where you want to grow with your channel. Be so focused on the hard work that you need to do right now that you don't have time to focus on the results, that you don't have time to constantly check your analytics or look at other people's YouTube channels and compare yourself. Like be so focused on the things that you need to do right here and now in the moment for the future growth of your brand that you're just hustling your butt off. So I'm hoping that you guys liked this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much to GoDaddy for sponsoring this video. Again, if you guys want to get a website, if you want to buy a domain, I highly recommend GoDaddy. That is who I use. If you guys want to check out the GoDaddy studio as well, when it comes to anything you need for branding, your logo, different templates for like Instagram stories or like Pinterest pins. I know we talked about that. Even like thumbnails, you can design all within the GoDaddy studio. So I'm going to include a link to that in the description bar down below, but that is it for this video. I will see you guys back here on Tuesday with another one. Bye guys. I think that's actually pretty good. Okay.